Making the transition from just a few pixels to reality is, is kind of bumpy. Next time, I'm wearing safety glasses and I gotta get a better helmet. Okay, here's the deal. To get the GP Power Cube, you gotta look inside yourself. Look in your own brain. See, we humans are 64-bit plus, but we still have some powerful under eight bit programs. When primitive humans were out on the savanna, we moved ahead of the other animals because of more powerful brains. However, things have changed, and they have changed faster than our brains have evolved. No! To do well in first power-up and in your life, you've got to use only 64-bit plus. Firsters powered up by GP will have a big advantage, and bringing GP to all societies will be a win-win. Yes, let's look at how GP and first power-up go hand-in-hand. Our brains are powerful, but most of us do not study how our brains work. However, many scientists do, and they're trying to get us to listen. Their research shows that our intuitive brain, the subconscious one that we tend to discount, is very powerful. It runs our lives much more than our deliberate, conscious brains. That sneaky and hidden and powerful intuitive brain has too much influence. Now, gracious professionals have learned metacognition, they know how to think about their own thinking. They know, for example, that it is very important to stop our sneaky brain when it is telling us to do the wrong thing. You see, evolution rewarded some nasty behavior, and we easily fall prey to inclinations to do the bad stuff. For example, we are pre-wired to be attracted to other humans, and that can result in some wonderful stuff like caring love, or it can lead to awful stuff like sexual assault not good. Gracious professionals recognize the need to lean toward the good part of that drive and suppress the other. Also, we are pre-wired to feel anger and frustration. Those emotions can produce a strong urge to fix wrongs or they can destroy. We are pre-wired toward tribalism. That one includes some very powerful urges. Now, tribalism gave humans a huge advantage over other creatures. We learned to work together, to share and to protect one another, but on the other end of the tribalism spectrum is kill the other tribe. Gracious professionals know how to pick out the good parts of tribal instinct and reject the bad. Compete like crazy, but compete fairly and ethically. Listen to the empathy bubbling around in your GP brain. Clearly any type of bullying is out. Clearly any type of hostile behavior is out. There are many more subtle ways primitive inclinations can override GP. For example, we apparently love to oversell. Our modern culture celebrates it. We seem to think gross exaggeration is good. Everything is over the top. On the evening news, the fire never burns through the roof, it explodes through. Products are never slightly improved, they're dramatically better. Every rain shower is the storm of the century. The stock market plunges two points. When you folks are working with your team, don't let your primitive brain convince you that others will love you more if you oversell. A team member who successfully sells a bad idea is not helping. Conversely, if a quiet person has a great idea and no one hears it, the team also loses. Just remember, being persuasive does not make you right, and being right does not make you persuasive. See, being persuasive is part of being gracious, being right is part of being professional. To get the GP in power up, you've got to do both. And one final thought. Scientists have some solid data that teaches us that our primitive brain can fool us into accepting what our tribe says over objective truth. Now in first power up, as you build and test a machine that absolutely obeys the truth of mother nature's laws, you can learn an important lesson about truth's superiority over groupthink. Pay attention to it.
That's better. You can't do any real work with loose clothing hanging about. Now let's get something straight. Very soon, you're gonna be let in on this year's game, and it's another good one. Trust me. Now we want you to be successful. The world needs more capable, smart, young innovators. First team members have been two steps ahead for many years now taking the hands-on, real-world experience that we give them out into the workplace. They're innovating in the world of technology, design, manufacturing, and making an impact. I know, because I see them, I meet with them, I work with them, and best of all, I hire them. My best ideas come when I'm enthusiastic, when I'm optimistic, when I'm talking to the first community. Then you gotta go back to the shop and turn those ideas into reality. It's tough, it's frustrating, but somebody's gotta do it. It's probably you. Now look, I understand the big problems are gonna be really hard to solve. And I understand you'll probably fail along the way. In fact, many times. I've failed at more things more times than most people I know. It doesn't matter how many times you fail especially when you're trying to do something that nobody's ever done, and it's difficult, and it's important. What matters is that each time you fail, you learn from it, you pick yourself back up, and you try again. And if you fall down seven times, but stand up eight, you're a winner. And I hope you're seeing that in your first experience. The theme of these clocks that I build isn't just time is important, that's why I build clocks, but the theme is, for every step back, two steps ahead. That's what's important. By the way, 
If you take one step back and two steps ahead, but stay synced with everybody else, it means you're moving three times their speed. You get three times as much life experience. You get three times uh, the ability to work at a difficult problem, to fail, take a new risk, pick yourself up, and move ahead. That's what's going to take to keep the world advancing. So my message this year is pretty much the same as my message every year. Use your time wisely. Be willing to take risks. Learn from your failures and keep moving. And by the way, not all those risks are technical risks with your robot. We need to grow first faster. To grow first faster, we need new and different ideas, bold new approaches. Reach out to your community. Reach out beyond your community. Help us grow first faster. Not all of what you try will work. We'll learn from it and we'll try something else next year. Again, take the right risks, move us ahead as quickly as you possibly can. Have a great season. Welcome to the 2018 First Robotics Competition and this year's game, First Power Up. Two alliances of video game characters and their human operators are trapped in an arcade game. To escape, alliances use power cubes to control switches and the scale, pass power cubes through the exchange for power ups, and ascend to face the boss. Teams may preload up to one power cube per robot. Additional power cubes are available in the power cube piles, along the fence nearest the scale, and in each alliance portal. At the start of the match, the plates of the scale and the switches are randomized. During the first 15 seconds, robots are autonomous. They work to cross their auto line and place power cubes on the switch and the scale. Alliances who successfully own their switch and have three robots cross the auto line will receive one ranking point. During the following 2 minute and 15 second teleoperated period, human operators remotely control their robots. They continue to gather power cubes to place on the scale and the switches to gain ownership for the longest time, earning points for each second of ownership. Human operators behind the Alliance Station wall collect power cubes from the exchange. They can deliver them back to the robots through the return or to their vault. In the vault, power cubes may be traded in for three power-ups. Alliances choose when in the match to activate each power-up to gain a temporary advantage during the match. The force power-up gives an Alliance ownership of their switch, the scale, or both. The boost power-up increases scoring for 10 seconds for either their switch, the scale, or both. And near the end of the match, Levitate earns one member of the Alliance a free climb. Other Alliance members climb from their platform. If all three members successfully climb, the Alliance can face the boss and gain an additional ranking point. The Alliance that earns the most points wins the match and defeats the boss. <laughs>